And then after that, more girls were interviewed. It was Raquel Gonzalez and a little girl that she called Chichita. Uh, except they're not happy with each other. And then finally, finally we got not only to the main event, which was the only thing on this program that any sane, rational person would have actually intentionally wanted to watch. Also, the only thing coming out of the program that everybody was talking about this past week, Walter against Roderick Strong. And... <sighs> I will start with, because it, the, the name issue was not revealed until the end of this thing. So let's, let's tell the people how they got there. It's Roderick Strong, and he's in the diamond mine with manager Malcolm Bivens, who they allow to say something every once in a while, and then otherwise his guys just get the shit kicked out of him usually, except when the Green Brothers won the Dusty Classic. But poor old Roddy is matched up with Valter, and it's perf this was perfect because even though Roddy's a heel, and he's got the manager, it accentuated Valter's size. Because Valter's a, a big guy anyway, but he looked even bigger against Roddy, because Roddy, of course, is vertically challenged. But also, these are two pros. They love to chop. They love to hit hard. Roddy doesn't mind, you know, laying shit in. And also, both guys can work. Roddy's got tons of experience. He can work with anybody. Walter works like a territory heel. It woke the crowd up in the building, it seemed like. And this was completely... It was the first thing on the show that resembled a wrestling match. They did different stuff, and they struggled to do it. It seemed like it was a contest. Everything made sense. Walter, he sold enough in this that I was... At first, it was appropriate, and then I'm thinking, well, maybe a little much because Valter is made to a certain audience, but he's not made to the entire audience, and they need to be protective of him. We'll get to that in a minute. And at one point, Roddy gave Valter a superplex off the top rope and only got a two count, and they he, they fought to get it, but that was a little much for Valter to be taking bumps this size, this big, in his formal introduction to the United States, I thought. However, Roddy's on him, he poured it on, but he couldn't put him away, and the people started chanting, fight forever. Brian, how much sense does that make? If you're watching a wrestling match, you should want your favorite, your hero, your your guy that you've picked to win, and you should want him to be able to do it as quickly as possible. Do they ever chant fight forever at a boxing match? Do they ever chant fight forever at a UFC fight, even though it may be a great fight? I've never heard it. No, because it don't make any fucking sense. You want your guy to fucking win. Unfortunately, now... People have come to realize, okay, this is all a performance, so this is good. It's a lot better than the other shit we've been looking at. Just do that all night. We've, we've, it's another thing we've lost. But anyway, besides the fact you wouldn't want to fight forever, Valter blocked a pile driver and hit his power bomb. Boom, one, two, three. And that's the right result. Obviously, it's the best thing on this program. It wasn't Valter versus Elia, but it was a good win for Valter, but he needs to be a little bit more dominant over everybody he faces, I think, on the way to the main roster. And right there, <laughs> we were almost off, and I figured, okay, that's, you know, at least they're heading in the right direction. And then Valter takes the microphone, and he says, the winner of this match is Gunther. And you hear crickets and confusion. You can almost hear a puppy dog in the background going, because hmm? nobody understood what the fuck. But apparently, we've found out in the intervening time since he uttered those words, some things, apparently they were going to change his name too. Possibly, they still might. I at first thought, oh my God, they have changed his name to reflect in honor of, in homage to one of the great characters 
in the history of American television, Gunther Tootie. From Car 54, where are you? Joey Ross. Joey Ross. I'm thinking his name is now going to be Gunther Tootie. There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short of child. Cruise ships do it idle wild. Car 54, where are you? If only you could have a partner named Muldoon, it would be perfect. <laughs> oh, and the incomparable Fred Gwynn. Yeah. And actually, Walter looks more like Fred Gwynn than he does Joey Ross. Nevertheless, that wasn't it. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> they were not naming him after Gunther Tootie, because apparently our sharp-eyed viewers on the internet look this up they had tried to trade they had applied for a trademark the wwe applied for a trademark just recently on the name gunther stark okay that sounds pretty german to me well there's a reason for that it is german not only it is german it is a german gunther stark the name that the WWE has just applied to trademark until after this, and then when this news came out, they have dropped the trademark application. Gunther Stark was a Nazi U-boat captain in World War II. <laughs> they... <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about this a couple of weeks ago on the program here. And I don't know, you, we, we should, oh heck, if, if Jace in editing wants to put it in, let him put it in. If not, we'll refer to it. But we said on the program here a couple of weeks ago, when we heard about Valter coming to the United States and potentially going to the main roster, I said, if anybody wanted to sell him to Vince, just say, look at this guy. Imagine he's a German or an Austrian or a Prussian or a Russian. He's an Ivan Drago. Imagine him in a military uniform or that face, the condescending, you know, manner that he has. He's a foreign menace. That's the way you get Vince can understand that and can have something to work with there. And then you you show Vince the the way he lays his shit in and carries himself in the ring, and he's a a heartless, cruel, you know, fucking something, right? So apparently, and I know Vince McMahon, and I know Bruce Pritchard knows Vince McMahon, but apparently they didn't sell the concept of making him a German war commandant. They, they fucking actually did it. They made, they were going to make him a real Nazi. After named after a real existing fucking Nazi. But then every, somebody looked up on the internet, looked up Gunther Stark and let that out. And they now they've dropped the trademark application, as I said. And, and I guess maybe if they're still going to go with it, because they had changed his name on the roster page. People started tweeting that out. So I, you know, I don't know whether it's still going to fly or not, but what again, you don't have to change everything. It's the concept of the, of the guy, the way he looks and the way he's presented. He could be Valter because they already know that. I'm not saying if you wanted to pick a name from scratch for somebody that would never been seen to introduce them, Maybe you wouldn't go with Walter, but once it's been done for the past few years, why change that? Just present him the way you want to present. And they did the same thing with poor old Mark Magnus. Mark Capani, he was Italian, but he had such uh, dark skin, he looked Arabic, and he's the one that became Muhammad Hassan. We, he was a great kid in OVW, had tons of potential, could work, great body, could talk. And they bring him up there in, instead of making him a, a, a grieved person who was uh, uh, oppressed here in this country and got a grudge because of the anti-Muslim sentiment, they just made him a fucking terrorist. And he tried to behead the undertaker. And in the first case of 
this ever in the history of wrestling. The network fired him, canceled his career, said, no, we're not going to have this on TV ever again. So now they want to make Walter, instead of making him the concept of an evil Prussian or German or Russian military officer, they want to make him an actual, name him after an actual existing Nazi. Is it just me, or has, has everybody gone completely out of their fucking rabbit-ass mind? This one is specifically completely nuts. I don't know how it gets this far. You would think if someone came up with the name Gunther, and again, they didn't think of Car 54. By the way, the, one of the weirdest records I have is the Joey Ross record. But as the, the song, ooh, ooh, the song, you know ooh, his catchphrase? Ooh, ooh, ooh. He was also in uh, It's About Time, It's About Space, It's About Two Men in the Strangest Place, It's About Two Astronauts. Remember It's About Time, where the astronauts went back in time and found the cave people and then brought them to the future? I didn't see that one, no. Well, go ahead with your talk of Walter. But to name him after an actual Nazi, that takes effort. <laughs> First of all, he's been on TV. He's known as Walter. Walter or Walter, however you want to pronounce it. He's been on WWE TV, he's been on NXT, he's been the star of NXT UK. Now all of a sudden, he just all of a sudden has a different name. What a coincidence, they just happened to pick the name of a fucking German U-boat captain? What the fuck happened here? And why do you change this guy's name? Well, and apparently the guy's easy to search because they came up with pictures of him and everything. And I didn't see the whole thing, but I saw a little bit of it and Walter did it. He did the promo, he's doing as good as he can. Why did he consent to this? That's the question I always have. Especially right now, where you have more guys putting their foot down about stupid shit than ever before. This guy was in Europe. He was happy. Why did he consent to coming over here, coming up with a whole new name that he won't be able to own? Why would he agree well, to any of this? But hold on now. We don't know what the timeline was, because, again, they just proved with old uh, uh, Allison Danger that they will move someone across the country or the world, they will promise them whatever, they'll get them ensconced wherever they're supposed to be, and then they'll fucking pull the rug out from under them. Maybe he'd already sold his place over in Vienna and fucking moved his shit, an international move, signed leases, and then they say, oh, by the way, we're going to fucking name you Tits McGee. Uh, well, do I want to pack everything up and turn around and make that? Would you want to move back to the old last manor? right after you've got into the brand new Last Manor. I wouldn't want to, but I wouldn't mind it. That was a great place. Well, but you know what I'm saying, for heaven's sake. Uh, they probably got him, and he's like, yo, what the fuck? You couldn't bring this up before? No, because then you knew what I'd say. I'm telling you, you know, these things, uh, sometimes they come as surprises, but I don't think that any of the wrestlers should be surprised or shocked from now on when shit like this comes up and oh everything's going along fine and then all of a sudden oh by the way we're gonna cut your balls off you know who's not gonna cut your balls off brian our friends at manscaped that's who they're not gonna cut your balls off folks because i'll tell you what, valentine's day is coming up and when you think about valentine's day of course the most important thing on that fateful day is clean balls and did you remember, folks, to order the package that will take care of your package with the best tools for the job? I'm talking about the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped, the thing that every guy needs in their life, and some girls. I've seen a few hairy and hirsute young ladies in my time. They might have benefited from this as well, but nevertheless, the name of the company is Manscaped, so we're going to go with that. The number one product. In this entire package is the Lawnmower 4.0, which is especially designed to trim hair on loose skin. So now we know how the corpse referee Rick Knox gets so slick. He's got no, he's got no eyebrows, he's got no eyelashes, he's got no body hair, no facial hair, no taint hair, but his skin is so wrinkly and it drips off of his bones like a popped balloon. He uses Manscaped. You just can't nick yourself. Folks, in addition to the Lawnmower 4.0's advanced skin safe technology, reducing the cuts and nicks on your delicate balls, or if you want to shave 
an actual dead body like Rick Knox, uh, it will it will not take the rotting skin off nearly like a regular shaver. And it's even got the 4000K LED spotlight so you can shave anywhere in light or darkness. And it's waterproof. So the folks at Manscaped are proposing making February 13th National Shave Your Balls Day. I believe they say it's one holiday that men and women can both get behind. That sounds like a Terry Garvin school of self-defense joke. <laughs> but if you do it on the 13th, then you might get a chance to do it on the 14th, guys. Shave them on the 13th and immerse them on the 14th. They'll go in nice and slick that way. The package also includes the weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer, and they even throw in two free gifts, the shed travel bag and the anti-chaving chaving or chafing or Chris Chavis, I don't know, Tatanka, the anti-Tatanka boxer briefs to keep the boys stored comfortably. And they also got the crop preserver ball deodorant, the crop reviver ball toner. It's all part of the performance package 4.0 from Manscaped. And if you go to Manscaped and make your Valentine's Day date or arrangements say, wow, great set of balls you've got there. You can do it even cheaper now because you can go to manscaped.com slash JCE and get 20% off and free shipping. Manscaped.com slash JCE, 20% off and free shipping. And as they say, join Cupid and shoot your arrow along with several loads on Manscaped this Valentine's Day. Or I should have said it like this. Join Cupid and shoot your arrow and a few loads with Manscaped, not on them. You don't want to do that on them. You want to do it with them on someone else. Oh, fuck it. Just call Cupid or an escort service. I don't care what you do. Just shave your balls. Manscaped. That's what we want to there say. Manscaped.com. Slash JCE.